Hi there folks, my name's Novawing24 from msflights.net and I'm here today to give a quick little tutorial on how to install um, all those wonderful free add-ons that you can find for FSX into your brand spanking new FSX Steam Edition. Um, so we're going to go through today, we're going to go through and install a couple of different aeroplanes and we are going to install some scenery as well today. So um, we're going to start off, let's start off with the aircraft because yeah, of course you know, that's what we want. We want to play around with aircraft, don't we? So alright, let's have a look. So let's start here. So I've downloaded a few of these at the moment. Now, we're going to start off today with probably the most widespread and one of the most popular add-ons, uh, free add-ons for FSX, and like, ever. So this is the T-45C, so the Goswalk, from Dino Cadeneo. Now, Dino Cadeneo's work, can I just say, Dino, you do amazingly, mind-blowingly awesome work. So, yeah, I just really want to say thank you for all that you do. Awesome work. Anyway, so you can download his aircraft for free uh, from his website, uh, which I will put in the description down below. So once you've downloaded it, so you'll get the definitely I've done a few of these here, but the, let's go start with the T45. So you get this file here. Now what you do, so once you've downloaded it to wherever you download stuff to, you then want to extract it. Now I always, just as a rule of thumb, extract things to their own folder. All right. Now. Most high quality freeware add-ons that you can find will usually extract into something like this. So if they actually already have the folders that you need to put into your main FSX directory, which makes your job as an installer, um, as a end user for all these installations so much easier. So you can see we've got two folders here. Um, you can kind of ignore this stuff, but it's always a really good to read in the readme file. I have never seen a file yet which says do not read me. Okay, readme files are in here for a reason. So uh, Dino here puts a few things like his change log and stuff like in there and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, what's cool though is that he does put in instructions as well. And again, most quality freeware uh, and, and indeed payware add-ons will actually have some form of installation guidelines and stuff like that. Excuse me, so give the functionalities and stuff like that. So it is highly advisable to actually, you know, look at that kind of stuff. You know, it, it, it is, as I said, they're called readme files for a reason. They really are. So anyway, all right, always get to read that. All right, so as you can see, uh, for Dino stuff here, you've got two folders. So you've got FX, so all the FX files that his aircraft call on, and you've got your sim objects folder, airplanes, going t 45 z Okay, and then it's all the fun stuff inside that. So... What we're going to do is we're going to go back here. All right. So what you want to do now, in a, as I said, in a quality freeware uh, piece of kit like this, you're going to essentially copy these two folders here. Copy those, and then we are going to switch over to where your Steam is, where your FSX is installed. Now, for me, uh, for most people, it'll be installed in under your Steam. Library, uh, my I've seen library split over two drives, so my flight sim steam stuff is here. So if I go into Steam Library, so this is that your top little Steam directory with the same for everybody, then Steam Apps, Common, and it'll have your game titles there. So for me, uh, on this particular drive, I've got just two games installed on this particular drive, so I've got FSX and DC as well. So FSX, now this is your top level FSX directory. So in here, this is all the files that make FSX run. Now, the real key important thing here is the fact that this is the exact same file structure that the box edition of FSX that we've been running for many, many years uses. It's in the same places, they're in the same order, they're in the same folders, blah, 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 it's all there. It's just the where the top level directly gets placed has changed. So, now that we've got this, we can simply, as you see, remember, we copied the two folders, the sim objects and effects, which are top level folders. So sim objects and effects there, and we can simply paste. And it'll take a moment while it pastes everything. There you go. And it doesn't look like it's that much, but let's go up and do sim objects here. And we will see now that our Boeing T-45C Goshawk has now appeared. ta -da! Congratulations, you've just installed your first freeware add-on aircraft for FSX Steam Edition. So let's go, what we're going to do is we're going to jump back and we are going to install another one, another one of my favourites. Uh, so jump over here. Right. So the other one is the Basler. Now the Basler is pretty cool. Um, Manfred Yan did this one. Um, really, really love his work as well. So let's just extract this one here. 
So the Basler BT67 essentially is a Douglas DC-3 with turboprops. Um, Basler aircraft conversions have been around for quite a while. Um, they still do them to this day. They still do the conversions, and yeah, they're they're around and they're quite cool. So gives you a couple of paints included and blah blah blah. Again, we have a quick read the readme file. Um, this is more the one where it shows you the install, so extract to temporary directory, which is what we've just done. Copy the three folders to your Flight Simulator X folder. So for us is FSX and our Sim one. Do to do to do. There you go. Um, you can get like add-ons and see if it gives you recommend add-ons and stuff like that. But let's ignore that for now. So let's have a look at this. All right. So here we are. So we'll follow his guys. We'll grab his three folders this time because he's got some custom sound files in this one. There we go. Copy those. And we'll switch over to our, again. Uh, as I said, these are, these are quality freeware add-ons, so no messing around stuff like that. You can just go straight to your top level and paste them. Now, as you get more and more add-ons, you will find every now and again it will say it finds something already there. Um, general rule of thumb, you're generally safe to override, but yeah, it's, it's a personal preference. Just beware. If there are conflicts and clashes, it might be worth sort of just you know not installing the clashed file um, or in, ha, taking a look at it once it's in its um, temporary directory first so you can actually have a look at that first before you get it going. Alright, so last but not least I did promise that we do some scenery as well but uh, look, what we're going to do is we're going to fire up these aircraft, we're going to show these aircraft off first. Actually you know what, no, I'm going to go back, I'm going to install the scenery. Alright, let's have a look. Anyway. Let's go. Here. Now this is some custom scenery of mine. Uh, so one of the things that I do over here at msflights.net is that I do host a weekly tour of Australia. Uh, so as part of that, I do have some custom modifications I make to some of the airports around Australia. Extract that one there. Da, 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 da. So kind of cool, kind of fun. I kind of enjoy it. I really do. Uh, you're welcome. To Please join us. Uh, we're on a bit of a Christmas break at the moment, but yeah, keep stay tuned at msflights.net for all the details coming up for the next Australia Tour flight. Now, on to the important stuff of installing scenery. Okay, so what we've done here again, it's got a quality add-on, um, readme file, da da da. So we go to da -da, place the whole folder into your add-on scenery folder in your main FSX directory. Again, most of the, as I said, quality add-ons, and I like to think that I'm a quality add-on producer as well, not that I produce many, uh, you can actually give you decent instructions as well. Um, this is good because this is going to give you some important extra steps that we need to do for activating scenery. So the first things first is we need to take this entire folder here. We're going to copy this folder. Now, your way add-on is uh, scenery will install is slightly different for each scenery file so that's why it's even more important to actually make sure you do read the ins uh, scenery installers uh, for special for scenery so there you go all right we're going to so what, we, what we've done here folks is we've gone to the main fsx directory and we've gone to the folder here called add-on scenery so we're just going to paste that whole folder there as the readme told us to there we go okay so now the fun part let's get this one fired up where are we? Play. All right, so we're going to uh, jump in here. So we're going to go straight across into our so we've got a free flight. We're going to have a look at our aircraft options. So, now you can see that I've ticked here show all variations, because I like to see, I like to choose what colour scheme that I'm actually going to fly. Um, so, here we are, we can see we've got the Basler here, the BT-67, so it's our twin turboprop conversion of a DC-3, as uh, a friend of mine starts playing Stronghold Crusader. Pretty spectacular. I just, yeah, I've always liked the DC-3 in its, all its forms, and the twin turboprops just look pretty damn awesome as well. There you go. All right. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, what else have we install? We install, of course, our T-45 Goshawk, and here that is. Absolutely beautiful work by Dino. It really is. I absolutely love it. I, you know, sometimes I wish he would just make an actual, you know, do convert it slightly into the actual standard BAE Hawk, but, you know, this is still pretty damn awesome. So we've got that one, and what was the other one we installed? We just did, you know, it was just the two aircraft we installed, wasn't it? Yeah. So there you go. So that's our two aircraft. So what we're going to do is we're going to take one of these up for a quick spin. 
and then I'm going to show off you some show off some of the stuff that we do with our scenery. Okay, so I think I'll take yeah I'll take him. All right, so what I'm going to do is I am going to go to what airport should we go to? I think it's one that I've changed in my little list. Go to East Sale. Okay, so this is before I've been. I know we put the scenery, in, but we haven't done what's called activating the scenery yet. So what you're going to see here initially is going to be what's default. So default for here at East Sale in Victoria, Australia, there is simply the four runway starting points and the fuel box starting point. That's it. So we're going to park ourselves at a fuel box. Uh, we're going to change time so it's actually daylight. That might be a good idea. Okay. All right. Alright, so we've got our parking brakes on. Yeah, that's the thing about parking your fuel boxes. They never really work so well for everyone, does it? it really kind of doesn't. Alright, let's just, let's just taxi away from this fuel box, shall we? Alright, so this is the scenery here at the default of East Sail. Get around, not much here, just a couple of buildings and not a great deal. But as you can see, our aircraft is here. Beautiful, beautiful that it is. We've got our cockpit. As I said, D if you have never flown Dino stuff, you if there's one set of freeware aircraft you should everyone should have in their in their setup, it really should be Dino stuff. It is absolutely incredible. It really is. Um, his attention to detail is phenomenal and his added integration to VRS's tack pack stuff is pretty cool. Um, by the way, VRS's tack pack, not yet in Steam Edition. Coming soon, but yeah, not yet. Anyway, ah, uh, oh, this thing's beautiful. Okay, enough of this. Now, so as you can see, not a great deal on display. It just kind of is very bland. Microsoft really didn't do a great deal when it comes to military airfields especially. So, there you go. Alright, now. Let's end this flight. So I want to show you what happens next. Okay, so we've ended the flight there. Now, to add scenery in. So you need to go to settings, and you go to this little thing called scenery library. Scenery library here, okay, so this is where everything is, this is all the default stuff that's loaded, blah, 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 blah. Okay. We want to add an area now. So we want to add in the new stuff that we just put in, which is Nova Wing 24, Oz 2 Airport scenery. So what we do is we navigate to the folder where that is. Okay. Then to make sure that we can, so we double click onto the folder. So we're inside it and we can see it's got a scenery and texture folder. We now go OK. Now here's the silly thing. You then have to click that big little white space in the middle. If you don't, it won't save it. So let's go to that again. So add area, add on scenery, into the folder you want. And then go OK and click there. Now in this case you see we've already added it so that's gone you're OK. So there you go. It's now, we can now see it so we know it's there and it's got a tick on it to show that it's enabled. So now that we do that we now go OK and it will then pause while it does a rebuild of the database. So we'll go back through, make sure everything's there, reload everything that it needs to do so we can display it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to sale, east sale, and we are going to go now suddenly we've got all these extra parking spots because one of the things that was in that I add into a lot of my airports is extra parking spaces. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump in over at hmm let's go parking four GRM large that's good that's good so we've still got a square up there ten for five okay now included in this scenery pack is not just extra changes to the airports themselves are doing things like adding in oops, adding in things like the extra parking spaces it also adds in extra AI, so they need some scenery objects and adds in some extra buildings as well so what you now see is you now see something that's a little closer to what it actually really looks like 
still limited by the fact that you know I'm using mostly default ob objects. You know, not even some stuff converted from AI aircraft and stuff like that. But still, this sort of goes to show that there is a bit more to it, and now you can actually really, really tell the difference between you know what is basic and what is you know now an add-on scenery pack. So. That pretty much runs, wraps it up for today, so it's just the important reviewing the important steps there, folks. So when you're adding in the scenery, so when you're adding in your aircraft, you want to make sure if there's if they're quality aircraft, freeware aircraft, um, and quality post pay pay aircraft that don't have a customizable like a full fledged install, you've got to manually copy them across. What you're going to need to do is you're going to need to check to see the file structure and then copy it into copy and paste into your FSX directory, so your Steam FSX directory. Then when it comes to scenery, you're going to be able to do the same thing, except one slight difference. What you're going to be doing is that you're going to be needing to not only copy and paste it in, but you're then going to have to activate it as well and make sure the scenery lets itself rebuild as well so you can see it. Alrighty, well that pretty much wraps up uh, this little introduction tutorial video to some of the cool things that you can add into your FSX. I hope this has helped you guys out. Uh, don't forget if you are if you have any questions, please post them in the comments below. And as always, you can find us over at msflights.net, and we can also see some of the other videos that I do myself uh, by heading over to my channel at Novawing24. Alright folks, I look forward to seeing many of you new Steam users uh, in the skies over at msflights.net. Uh, we're a very fun and family orientated community. Well, well we're definitely a fun community anyway. Uh, you can find us over at our TeamSpeak uh, 3, that's our main communications, which can also be found at msflights.net as the TeamSpeak 3 address. Come on over and join us and uh, we'll see you in simulated skies very, very soon. Alright, take care folks, safe skies to all, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.